to forward it. Sure. So what you're seeing here is uh, the students on the first day of the program actually seeing what the shipyard is like. Um, we like to always, you know, do a tour, go board a vessel and kind of get an idea if this is really the program for them. So, you know, we're trying to fulfill the workforce needs and uh, working with the maritime sector as well. And these are good middle waged jobs that these students get when they graduate from the program. Let's go to the next slide. So you can see uh, we're pretty busy at what we do. Um, we've got a lot of different things going on. Um, you know, we're, we're doing welding, cutting, assembling, going for welder certification. So there's a lot of things happening down here other than just welding. Let's go to the next slide. So in uh, the workforce in shipbuilding, um, there's a lot of people that are getting to the retirement age and uh, they take a lot of knowledge with them when um, they leave. So bringing in new students and students getting, you know, into an apprenticeship program as well is a great addition for the maritime industry to get, you know, good skilled welder, fitter, craftsman. Um, so this could also go for other types of workers, but we're primarily looking at welding fabrication for shipbuilding. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so real quick, I just want to add to, I mean, I think the other thing you'll see, especially with the students that are the graduates that Ken showed is that we really are focused too on diversifying the workforce, right? So you've got a, a aging workforce um, that the demographics are not quite as, as diverse as we'd like them to be. So that's the other kind of commitment we have in our program. And so it's always, I'm so, always so psyched to see also just, you know, female welders too. So it's important to note. Ken, do you want me to, or you can start. Okay, so um, this is uh, an overview of the program. It's a certificate program. The uh, length of the program is six months. Um, the tuition is roughly $2,000 per quarter. Um, that includes the textbooks, tools. And then the classes that we're running are Monday through Friday. And we're, you know, going with uh, eight in the morning till two o'clock. So um, this could also apply up at the campus for the welding fabrication program with these credits as well, if they wanted to go another direction. So um, some of the additional key partners that we have on board with this is the state of Washington. Um, we've got a couple of graduates that work at Eagle Harbor on the Washington State Ferry side, um, the Boilermakers Union, the Pipe Fitters Union, Workforce Development, King County as well. And uh, the really big thing is down on the bottom right here, the shipyard welder starting wage. They call it an associate two coming in after six months. And if they are hired, then they could start out at $28.18 an hour. So that, that's a pretty good wage structure for uh, a six month investment you know, and, and gaining a, a trade skill and a career. So um, we could go to the next slide, Veronica. So you can see that we're doing quite a few different things. We're dealing with uh, the welding, the cutting, the fitting, the certification, testing of our coupons. Um, it's a lot of work to get to what we call the 101 certification and Lorna and Christina worked hard to get that certification. That was a lot of work. So um, they could explain that a little bit. Um, let's go to the next slide. So where do some of the students go to work other than Vigor? Well, we've got students that have gone to Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, Stabbert Marine, um, Foss Maritime, Delta Marine, Washington State Ferries, as I mentioned earlier, Puglia. Um, we've had a couple students at Duwamish Industrial Welding as well, the Snow Company, and Safe Boats as well, and Pack Ship. So there's a good core of employers that need 
people coming in to the trades that have a good background on welding coming in and uh, understanding the processes and the, the shipbuilding nomenclature and the layout of a ship, you know, with the wraparound uh, classes, like, you know, the math 110 is a very important thing. Um, man lift training, OSHA 10, you know, there's fire watch training. There's a lot of good resume attributes there that help them gain employment as well. So let's hit the other slide. So is there any questions? Um, that's what our facility actually looks like when everybody's, you know, doing some good production welding, trying to gain some skills. Um, and then the next slide here. I think that's it. No, there should be one oh. more. So um, if there's any questions, Veronica could probably answer most of them and I could uh, do the welding related questions. Then Liana Lee is our uh, navigator as well. And she could uh, help with that additional information for possibly funding and wraparound services for students. And there is South Seattle scholarship programs as well that students could get into you know, to gain funding. So um, there's a lot of resource there for, you know, students wanting to come into this program. So with that, I'd like to end with having our apprentices say a word or two real quick. Okay. <laughs> so this is Christina, she's gonna go up first. And she is a certified pipe welder as Hi. well as a structural welder. Yeah. Um, so I went to the six month program. Um, and do you guys, what questions do you have for me personally <laughs> about like- how did, you, how, did you choose, how did you choose this, um, this training program? Um, I found it online. Um, I was just looking for a technical college type situation, hopefully like in the waterfront uh, area. So I found this and it was like an amazing thing that I had never even heard of. Um, and yeah, I mean, at $2,000 per quarter, I was like, I can totally afford that. So I just jumped in with both feet and it was like really, it was really cool. I'm glad I did it every day. A six month program is two quarters then? Yeah, two yep, quarters. There you go. Mm -hmm. What were you doing before this? Uh, I was a bartender. And so I actually did this during the daytime and I bartended at night for six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are there any prerequisites needed to get into the program? Um, nope. I was, uh, I didn't really even know what welding was to be completely honest. <laughs> So it was really cool. Like Ken's like the best instructor I've ever had. You know, he can work with anyone that's got, you know, tons of like knowledge already in welding or what have you, or someone that it was like me has no idea what welding is. I can like bring them all the way up to like the certification process and, you know, pass, pass the tests. Being a female, did you find it harder to get into the program? Um, no, I don't get into think so. a career. Yeah, I Ona, I believe her name was was the Ona Fisher. Ona Fisher, yeah, she was the original navigator. Whenever I went through, and I mean, it was it was basic. I mean, she didn't <laughs> try to like shove me away or anything, you know. So, yeah. And you're at you're working with Vigor now? I am, yeah. And how's that going for you? It's great. Yeah. So I'm in the apprenticeship um, through local 32, it's pipe fitters apprenticeship. And um, I started that just a couple months after graduating. So it was awesome, you know. Ken was able to like put in a really great recommendation for me. Um, <laughs> and uh, throughout the apprenticeship, you know, it's been great, like working with like the older people, like that are on the verge of retirement, 
and getting that like knowledge that's like <laughs> it's not like something you can put on paper necessarily um but you know whenever you like pass it down through like visual stuff you know it's it's really incredible to learn all that stuff how was it for you i mean just in the space of uh First of all, I think your story is really amazing, right? Like, um, what was it like working during the, uh, going to school in this space during the pandemic? Oh my gosh, that was crazy. <laughs> um, during the pandemic, it was definitely like um, interesting because we kept working the whole time. So it was like, oh, here's this new rule. Here's this new rule. Like every day, every day we came in, it was like a new rule or whatever. So it was like, it was stressful to be sure, but you know, the company has taken care of us. They've put a lot of money in to like get us like the proper PPE and everything. So, yeah. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Lorna, would you like to say something? Sure. We did have a couple more questions that come into the chat as well. Um, the first one, what do you suggest for those who are interested but cannot afford the cost? So we do have um, we do have some tuition options uh, available for students to apply for. So we do we actually folks can actually apply for federal financial aid for this certificate. Um, that's something, though, that typically takes a few months. Right. So you want to think about that ahead of time and, and connect people to that resource. We also have a workforce education office. So for people that have specific eligibility, whether it be income based or, um, you know, based on their if they're laid off from previous jobs, et cetera, uh, there is potential funding that is available to help support them as well. OK, thank you. And there was one more. Um, do you a high school diploma to apply? And do you have to have turned 18 to apply? Both yes. of Yeah. High school diploma and 18. Um, and then I was gonna say one other thing, actually, when I was listening to some other things that were being said is, is the question, you know, and I think that people, some people here certainly that are professionals in the community recognize this piece about just, you know, females in a traditionally male dominated work environment. And same thing with, you know, even in, in college programs. So at South, we did launch um, kind of a, a women in trades student club over this last year. And we'll kind of convene it again once the pandemic is over, we could be doing it actually remotely as well. But it is an important just peer support network because um, we realize in different industries, you know, trades industries, similar, um, similar issues arise, right? So trying to create this network of, of individuals that are just experiencing school um, from a different perspective, um, we, we feel like we've got some additional supports we wanted to put in place to help support their success. Um, five days a week. Uh, it's Monday through Friday and it's eight to two. Um, and it really is, I mean, the thing that, you know, she keeps talking about Ken and Ken is, Ken's a little phenomenal, right? And we, and he's, he's a faculty member for South. He also works for Vigor. He's very, very well connected in the industry as well. So it's almost as if when people come to our, to our training program that they start their job interview kind of on day one, right? Cause he is, people will always say, Ken, you know, this, this person applied, how, you know, how is their attendance? How is their attitude? How are they, are they, are they prioritizing safety? All these things. And so, I mean, that is this piece about, it is an incredible opportunity, um, but no kind of that as an opportunity from day one. Um, and the eight to two is kind of structure it like a work day. So people start to get in the habit of what it is to kind of, you know, be on time and, and be committed to something for that length of time. Um, and so we try to kind of have those work maturity skills be developed and embedded in the program. So it helps with, with the transition and helps them be prepared for the workforce. Um, 